This is video number three. This is when we get into the nitty gritty and we do some annotating and some note taking about the text. This is probably the hardest part of doing research is reading and trying to figure out what is it in this source that you are going to be able to use. So I've got some tools. I've got a pen. I've got a highlighter. I've got a little notebook in case I want to make some notes. My article itself has got page numbers. And that's going to be important. If I decide that I want to take a direct quote out of here, I'm going to need to include that page number in my in-text citation. So you want to look for page numbers or some other way to distinguish if you know that you're going to be taking direct quotes out of something. If there are no page numbers, you might go through and uh, number paragraphs. That is acceptable as well. This is actually a 20 page article. I'm not going to sit and read this whole article to you. I'm just taking a short section out of the discussion area to show you how I might go about uh, talking to the text and making myself some notes. So I'm going to start here about in the middle of the page. So recall that this article is a, is a research paper on chat reference services. So in the world of library, that is trying to help students over a chat service. While exploratory, findings further suggest that patrons respond most positively to referrals that are framed as a benefit. Put the, put the initiative for follow-up in the hands of the subject specialist and include a reference interview, regardless of the level of assistance the chat provider offered. Okay, so there are some words in here that if you weren't familiar with my profession, you might not know. So reference interview. What is a reference interview? I know that's a series of questions that you might ask a student to try to figure out what it is that they're they're trying to find. We found this found that patrons respond most positively to referrals that are framed as a benefit, framed as a benefit. So they're saying they had positive experiences if one, the referral was framed as a benefit. If two, it put the initiative for follow-up in the hands of the subject specialists. Now in this case, I know because I've read the whole article, the subject specialists are librarians who, who specialize in a specific area. There are three things that makes this service work well. One, if it's framed as a benefit. Two, if the initiative for follow-up is in the hands of the subject specialist and not put in the hands of the student. So the subject specialist is going to reach out to them. And three includes a reference interview. So here's my number two. Here's my number three. Okay. So I'm just going to highlight this. I'm going to start here. Positively, re let's see, they respond most positively. And include a reference interview. And this was regardless, I'm going to keep going, regardless of the level of assistance the chat provider offered. So even if the person who was chatting with them didn't offer them that much help, but they included these three things, the student on the other end had a positive response to that. So I might even make some notes and tell myself, how students utilizing chat get the most positive experience. And that's on page 688. And I might just put a note here in the margin, positive experience for students. All right. I'm gonna keep going. This is evidence that a referral conducted in an optimal way, in an optimal way, can be considered a marker of quality service. Right? So if we can do this, our students are going to think that it's, it's a quality service rather than a regrettable necessity associated with non-professional staffing of chat reference services. 
So in this uh, study, they did have some people that weren't librarians that were monitoring their chat service. And that's what they're talking about here. They're not in those cases, even when they had people who weren't professional librarians who were monitoring this, if they followed these areas, the student on the other end still had a positive experience. I'm going to skip this paragraph because it's pretty contextual and it, I'll have to spend more time explaining to you what they're talking to than, than actually how you might utilize the text. So I'm going to skip down to this paragraph and uh, continue reading. In these data, reference interviews were conducted infrequently, but patrons were most likely to respond positively to a referral when the provider conducted a thorough reference interview. Okay, so this again, that positive experience, and then I'm gonna put a star here, reference interview. Reference interviews were conducted infrequently, but patrons were most likely to respond positively to a referral when the provider conducted a thorough reference interview. And reference interviews have always been best practice. They also include a little citation here. So I might look at number 21 and see if there's something out of that that I can gather about conducting a reference interview. So if I'm trying to convince my staff that it is really important to conduct that reference interview, and I have some evidence to back it up, uh, that could be something that I might use. So I'm going to write myself a note, importance of reference interview. And that's also on page 688. Some chat providers and researchers are concerned that patrons in the chat environment will not have the patience to answer questions. This analysis, again, there's another little reference here, so I could look at that study, how they got that information. This analysis suggests that patrons are willing to share information and will respond positively to a referral when the provider takes time to understand their information need. So in this study, they, when they analyzed their data, they found that even though there had been a, a previous thought that patrons uh, wouldn't have the patience for this, in their data, they found that not only did they have the patience, but they responded more positively to a referral when uh, the provider took some time to figure out exactly what that student, student needed. So I'm going to highlight that area also. And both of these tie back to this. Both of these things that I've highlighted, the way that they've said these things is not uh, spectacular. They haven't used some sort of grand language that I couldn't repeat. So I don't really see a need to actually pull direct quotes from here. I think I could paraphrase this information just as well as as grabbing a direct quote. So I probably wouldn't use either any of this as a direct quote. I would probably paraphrase it. When you come across something that it's just written so well and so beautifully and you just uh, have a really hard time imagining rewriting that yourself, that might be a time when you would choose a direct quote. I'm going to give you another link right down below this video to another video that a librarian made. She practices reading apprenticeship in her reading and talking to the text, just to give you another example besides me so that you feel comfortable as you start uh, doing your annotations and really reading your sources this week. Okay, that's it for me. Last video.